Welcome back. Cancer remains the second leading cause of death in the United States. Concerning new data shows women are being diagnosed younger and more frequently. The American Cancer Society says six of the ten most common cancers are increasing while predicting more than two million new diagnoses this year, more than 618,000 deaths. The fourth annual Hologic Global Women's Health Index out today showing a decline in testing rates for cancer. But advances in artificial intelligence could help turn it around. Joining me now is the CEO of Logic, Steve McMillan. Steve, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank Thanks you so for much for being it. here. So we're talking about this AI investment that President Trump has been talking about, $500 billion invested in the United States for data centers and artificial intelligence. How does that impact your business and the industry overall? Yeah, it's, it's obviously very early, but I think it it is incredible on multiple fronts. One is the AI front, but the other is the symbolic approach of the government supporting industry again, which I think is an incredibly important point. And I think Bill McDermott was just making that earlier. But uh, back on the AI front, AI, I think, can have such an incredible impact on healthcare. We've been doing it for a while with breast cancer detection. More recently, we got our digital cytology, which is basically digital pap tests approved. And what it's doing is it's allowing radiologists to operate so much faster and read more images in less time with a higher degree of efficacy. So, for example, we've reduced false positives by about 70%. Wow, 70%. So if you think, yeah, in breast cancer. So if you think about what happens today when somebody has a false positive, they're gonna typically go in and have a biopsy or have additional scans done that are not needed if it was a false positive. So what you wanna do is reduce false positives and increase the ability to detect cancers. The other part that we've seen is that for every 10 cases identified by a human eye, a human radiologist, we're finding 11 cancers in using the AI. So that's one more case found for every 10 people. That's unbelievable. You know, you multiply that across the world, that's millions of additional cancers found early, early stage when you can treat them best. Because as you were just saying too, as we're starting to see women getting cancer earlier, if you think about cancer in general, if you get it earlier in life, it's probably much more aggressive than if you get it later. So that ability to detect cancers earlier in younger women, mm -hmm. especially or younger people in general, it's so much more important to be able to A, treat it quickly, reduce cost and you know be much better quality of that's life. That's incredible yeah. and that's so important to, to get it early and to be able to use technology to do this. How does the AI work specifically in identifying the cancer in breasts? If you think about it in very simple terms, our AI computer aided you know, detection, what it does is it takes all the imaging and particularly since we invented our 3D mammography, 3D mammography, one of the incredible benefits is it gives you so much more imaging. But the flip side is it creates a lot more images per scan, per, per mammogram. So you now have a whole bunch more images that the radiologist has to go through. Using our AI detection, what the AI does is it screens through all those images. So if you think about it, think about a book, right? Instead of having to go through every page of the book, which the radiologist had to do historically, now the computer goes through all the books and then it says, hey, go look at page 72 in the upper left corner, go, go look at page 132. So it streamlines the ability of the radiologist to just go focus in on the key areas. Mm -hmm. And that the, the, the time saving alone is enormous. That is. Um, what about your other businesses, diagnostics business? You've made an acquisition. I want to get your take on whether or not the scale is going to continue. Do you need to make more acquisitions? Where are the potential opportunities there? Yeah, we've been, you know, we've kind of grown both organically and through small, small acquisitions where we take new products and then you know build on them over time. Our diagnostics business has quietly become a big growth driver for us through both our molecular diagnostics, and you remember because you had us on, we responded to the world's need for COVID. Okay. Uh, I was on with you the morning that uh, California shut down back in March of 2020. 2020. Yeah. We, we pivoted, you said the cavalry was coming, and that really catapulted our diagnostics business to a global scale as we placed Panthers around the world. And then we've been building out our menu 
view of, of options, particularly a lot of STIs and, and vaginosis. Vaginosis is our latest uh, innovation that's been incredibly strong because it's been one of these diseases that is a very common occurrence in women, but has been misdiagnosed for years and years because we didn't have the degree of precision or specificity and sensitivity as developed in our test. We also did an acquisition or diagnostics business of biotheranostics which is a product that actually can help uh, women who've had early stage uh, breast cancer that may not need to stay on hormone therapy for a long time. So they can come off basically endocrine therapy over time if they don't have the you know, different genes. So you know, we just keep getting more and more specific and precise in the ability to bring new products that can be, you know, really enhance the quality of life for people and reduce the cost. And, and you've solidified yourself as the leader in this. I mean, in terms of 3D mammography, for example, that's the standard now. It, it is. It has been, and, and you were there first wow. creating this. It's now you go to all hospitals. There are, it, it would be a disappointment if they don't have 3D. Yes, and you remember the early days when they were just starting to adopt it, and yes. now we feel very good that it is virtually everywhere, even out in the community hospitals, and really around the world, it's become a much more prominent um, vehicle for, for testing. Let me, let me go back to breast health for a second and this idea that cancer is hitting younger and younger women. Do you have any idea why that is? I don't, as, as because I'm not a physician, I don't want to overstate yeah. myself, but there are, you know, some questions around lifestyle issues, you know, even things we may be consuming. Uh, there are some discussions about um, pregnancies being later uh, in life and all kinds of different. So the, the reality is there's a lot of theories out there right now. Um, don't fully know, but I think that's where also, candidly, some of these investments in AI and the thing even that you know they announced yesterday in terms of Stargate, I think there'll be opportunities to better figure out because you know to me the magic of AI as it comes to healthcare is there's still so much guesswork in health healthcare. Yeah. As far as we've come, we're actually in the early stages and the ability to process high level data, particularly as we keep having these innovations, will probably help us and lead us to better understanding these kinds of things. What do you want to say to investors real quick on the stock? They want to know when they're going to see further growth there. Oh. What are the plans? You know, I think we just keep executing. We've delivered uh, EPS growth of over 10% for the last decade. We will continue to do that and continue to feel like we've got a great business in a great business of, of helping women's health. And we so appreciate all your efforts. Steve, great to see you. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Steve McMillan, Hologic.